The next kind of project we want to talk about is an entrepreneurial pitch video. This idea is you want to sell an idea. We've talked a little bit about making your pitch, that is the main idea of your video. This kind of video is all about pitching a product, that is the elevator pitch. Remember an elevator pitch means you get in an elevator and you start going up and you talk to another person inside the elevator and inside that time between going up and the next time the elevator stops, the person says, oh, your idea is good. I'd like to invest some money in that. I'd like to buy into that. An entrepreneurial pitch is about selling an idea. And usually that idea is a product or a service. So this is very business related, right? But you don't have to be a business person to have a, something you want to pitch. And you could be anybody. Lots of people start businesses and they weren't business people before. These days it's very common that you can pitch your idea on websites that help you get funding. So these are websites like Indiegogo or Kickstarter where you can put your idea onto a website and people can donate money. It's not really donate, they invest kind of, but it's kind of a donation too. And you can use that money then to create your product or service and you may pay those people back with, with the product or service. So they give you money up front and to help you develop the product and you may give them the product later. So this kind of pitching is called an entrepreneurial pitch. So an entrepreneur, of course, is a person who makes a product, sells a product, and starts everything on their own. So this is project number three I asked my students to do. It's an entrepreneurial product or service investment video. It can be 30 seconds to 60 seconds, again, keeping it very short. If you go onto these websites for investing like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, you can see the videos are very short. And if you watch and one of the videos is long, I think you very quickly kind of lose interest. Now that's not very exciting. It's the short videos that keep people interested and excited. And short here is very helpful because it shows you really know your point. What is your main point? You know it very well. And that's important. So a pitch video is a also called crowdfunding. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be crowdfunding. It could be for anything. You could be using a video to take to a bank for investing. You could be using a video to show other investors who are private investors or angel investors or venture capitalists. But this idea is more the more common way we see people today, which is crowdfunding, Indiegogo and Kickstarter, for example. In this case, I allow my students to define their own target audience as far as like a fake product. You're just making up a product. It's not a real product. It's kind of a game we're playing. So, so I ask my students to make a pitch, make a video for a product, but they don't really need to spend time to think of a great product. That's not the point. It could be something they're just kind of playing with. But the point is that the video's target market are potential investors. That's a key point. The video is going to be for potential investors. So that's the target market segment. The target audience of this video is potential investors. Now, who's the target audience for the product or service? That's not important. This project, that's like pretend. That's not really a real thing. It could be anything. It doesn't really matter. We're just making it up. It could be something that already exists and we just use it as an excuse to make our video. The MacGuffin, actually. So when you're making a pitch video or an entrepreneurial or a crowdfunding video, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to call it a pitch video. When you're making a pitch video, here are some of the things you need to pay attention to. You need to make sure that your main point is really, really clear and it's up front in the video. That is, you very quickly can see what is the main point, what is the main advantage of this product or service. and that's really the, the key. Why is this product good? Why is this service good for me? What does this product do for me? I'm the viewer, me, right? So that needs to be right up front. Another thing you can do is pay attention to the ABCD rule. What is an ABCD rule? ABCD rule means A, attract attention. B, build interest. C, create desire, D, define action. 
I really like using the ABCD rule for helping my students kind of get clear on, on how does a kind of marketing, attention getting process work. And the ABCD rule, which you can see here, I like to use because it's easy to remember. But it's also easy to understand if we kind of follow the flow that it has. So look with me here for this flow. So let's talk about attention. Let's say that you're walking down the street and you're passing a store and you can see the glass and you can see something in display inside there. And it's something, right, and gets your attention somehow, right? And it's got a model in there and the model looks great. Okay, this is getting your attention. Somehow that window, that display window is getting your attention. This could be true on the internet, this could be true on the street, this could be true in any way to get your attention. In our video, you can use any way that you can think of to get the attention of the viewer. Next is, you see this window and you say, you know what, hmm, that's kind of interesting. I want to see a little bit more about that. So maybe you walk up to the window and you can see some details about it. Or maybe you can see some information about it. And it says that it's on sale, and it says what's the price, and it's 80% normal price, and then here are some features. So I learned some of the features. I see some of the information about the product. Now I'm beginning to get interested. So I learn more. Then I think, hmm, should I buy that? You create desire. How do you create desire? Maybe there's a super sale price. Maybe there's a one day only sale. So I kind of say, hey, I should get that now. I mean, I'm not really sure I want that, but it's only one day sale, so maybe I should get it now. And this, is, this creates desire. This is how you do that. What's another thing? You could say, buy one, get one free, right? That's a really favorite one in China and Taiwan. Get one free. What does that do? That means if you're already a little bit interested, this helps to create that desire to buy. If you're not interested, then buy one, get one. So what, right? If there's something that you don't want, and I say, hey, here's something you don't want, and if you buy one, I'll give you one for free. It's like, what? That doesn't make sense, right? So you're already interested, which is B, build interest. Now is C, desire. So I'm interested, huh? Maybe I should buy it now. And then the last one is define action. So how do I buy it? How do I buy it? And you know, how do we do this? We say, oh, you can just pay cash now or you can buy now and pay later. That's possible, right? On credit, buy now, pay later. Or maybe we can have a very popular these days payment plan. A payment plan. So that means what? Maybe you can pay in 12 months. So every month you pay a little bit and after 12 months you're done paying. So that installment kind of plan. Uh, paying over time with no interest. Interest free maybe. So you save some money. Something like this. So that's the ABCD. So one more time because I think it's really easy to remember and it's a great rule of thumb. And this is how you make your video for selling your pitch. Making your pitch. Selling your product. A attract attention, B, build interest, C, create desire, D, define action, A, B, C, D rule for marketing and this applies to making your entrepreneurial video, of course, a great way to do it. Okay, let's go to the hardware table. Okay, here we're at the hardware table, and what are we gonna talk about now? We've already got our audio, very important, our video, our hardware, our location. We've got a release form from all the participants. And now we wrap up our filming and we go back home. Now what do we have? We have all of that video in files on our computer. Now we're gonna talk about post-production. You can go online and find many videos about all the details of post-production. There's so much, of course, the basic being editing 
and then changing things, adding things, that's post-production. But I want to talk a little bit about how do you add some more to your video after you've already shot things. Usually what you want to do is maybe add some voice or add some speaking. Why would you want to do that? Well, probably one of the main reasons is when you were shooting your video, the sound was not good. Remember I kept talking about sound? Well, all of that getting ready, still stuff happens and the sound goes bad. And what can you do? Now you're already home. So you can add audio later. For example, if someone was speaking and the microphone didn't work, you can now record them separately and match it to the mouth moving on the video. Not easy to do, but you can do it. Let's talk about some ways that you can do that for the hardware, some easy ways. So let's say you get home, you get your video on the computer, and now we're, we can have a microphone. So, of course, we've talked about our microphones already. Our basic microphones, probably KTV, by a microphone like this. There are many microphones that you can buy online now that are very good prices that they call podcasting, podcasting microphones. And they're very good prices, very reasonable and very good quality. And you can see this microphone is made specifically for speaking into at a very close distance, having a good sound, very clear. So when you use a microphone like this, you actually speak right up to it, very close like this. You may see this when you watch people working on radio stations or radio shows. They put that microphone very close. And then this little screen here stops the air from puffing into it. So that protects that a little bit, which is good. Now the question is though, how do you get that sound into your computer? Well, when you buy your microphone, lots of microphones now for podcasting actually have a USB out. So that means it could go to USB. Now you can buy a PC microphone for your computer, but the quality is terrible, really, really bad. By having a little bit more money, you get a great mic, and you can use this mic in the future, even use this for Skyping or talking over the internet. It just gives a great voice, a great sound. So these kinds of microphones, it's worth the money. It's not a lot of money, but it's more than worth it. Now you may get a mic that has USB out already, and that's great, but you may get a mic that only has XLR, like our example here. This is XLR out. What do I do to get that into the computer? Well, here's a pretty cool device. Uh, this is an XLR. You see, it's got the three holes there. A little bit hard there. A little bit hard to see. That's XLR to USB. And it's got some volume controls in here and gain control. Microphone gain and volume. And it even has a little earphone plug hole so you can listen to what's coming in. So you could take something like this. You could set this up. I could plug this right in here, actually, this XLR, just like that. Or I could have a wire. And then I take this USB cord and put that into my computer. And then I bring my actor or my talent in and I say, look, we couldn't record your voice, it didn't work, something was wrong, but I need you to say your lines now. And then they could speak into the microphone as they're watching the video and match the lips, or they could just be saying other things, or you may just be adding other voice to your video, which is called voice over. Just having a voice talking, giving instructions. So that's a great thing. So that combined with, you can also use your portable mixer. You can use this mixer at home too, so you can plug in your your XLR here and then you could use your output here and you could go into your computer's in jack. Although the quality you have to be careful because if you're using your computer's audio in sometimes the quality may not be very good. You have to be especially careful of jiggling the wire, moving the wire. You have to watch out is your sound card good quality. But if you use something like like this it's already converting the audio to digital, sending it to your computer. This does all the work, and this is usually a better quality. Or if you buy a microphone that's good and has USB coming out, then that will probably be pretty good quality too. So good luck on your post-production.